So in this installment in the series, we're going to talk about dimension scaling, and we're going to bring in our uh, virtual flight test power pod to uh, kind of see where we need to upsize or downsize our current placeholder geometry that we have for our model. And again, this is basically just kind of a proportion reference that we have. We're going to be adding to and modifying these as we go along, but this is just sort of our starter scaffolding. Uh, I've gone ahead and removed the bottom faces because we're actually going to leave the bottom of our model open for putting our power pod in. And the only other, other change I've really done is to bring up the uh, top of the crew cabin to be sort of flat uh, to match up with the uh, bottom surface of the wing. Because my plan for the wing is to have a uh, fold over airfoil with a bit of under camber on the wingtip edges. Uh, so uh, if we have time, we'll get to that in this one. If not, it'll be in one of the, probably the next one after that, the next episode after that. So, but first let's talk about dimensions. Uh, SketchUp has a dimension tool that's incredibly handy. It's this little guy up here. If you click it, you can basically select any two points and it will give you the distance between those points. And it gives it to you in this uh, dimension line here that you can move around. Um, sometimes it's easier to read if it's kind of projected off of the model a bit uh, as opposed to trying to read it where it's right there over top of the lines of the model. You know, it can be kind of difficult to read, but you can always kind of pull it off to the side and makes it really easy to read. And this will basically have the text pointing towards you, whichever orientation or direction you're looking at it. So you'll always be able to read the dimensions. So this can be very handy to figure out, you know, if something's the wrong scale or if you're just curious kind of how big something's getting. For instance, if we wanted to see, let me go ahead and delete that dimension. And if we wanted to see from wingtip to wingtip, what kind of wingspan we're currently looking at. And again, we haven't scaled it to the right size yet. Uh, we can, or we'll go from that point, oops, that point. Oh, I backtracked too far, delete that. That. All right, there we go. Now let's try and get our dimensions here. Uh, it's trying to find a specific point on this curve, and it doesn't really like curves on the dimension tool. So we'll go from this point to roughly its corresponding point over here, just to give us a rough estimate. Let's see, it's looking like 2 feet 9 inches and 11 sixteenths, but you know, again, that's from two random points, they're not exactly straight across. But let's see what happens when we bring in our virtual power pod. Now I've actually already modeled up a flight test power pod to scale, and I've loaded it into the Google 3D warehouse, which is something that you can access right from within SketchUp with the little button up here, it looks like a box with an arrow pointing down. So if I click here, and if you search for power pod flight test, uh, there we are. This is the one that I put up there. You can see some of the other models that other people in the flight test community have put up on the warehouse. But the one that we're interested in is this one. And one of the great things about the 3D warehouse is once you find a model in it, you can actually just hit this download model. And it'll say, do you want to load this directly into your SketchUp model, which we do and it downloads it and brings it right into your file. All right, so this is my PowerPod setup that is to the proper scale from based on the PDF plans from Flight Test. And it also has an extra little panel up here. So let me go ahead and move this off to the side and we'll take a look at what we've just loaded into it. So within this, if I double click, I go into the component. Everything's sort of grouped and arranged. But this panel up here, if I move it up, you can see that it basically just has a plate with the slots for the notches that are in the power pod. So that if you wanted to, say, design any type of swappable aircraft, this already has kind of like your cookie cutter template for matching up the notches of the, of the power pod itself. Now, with 
our aircraft, because of how I'm planning on anchoring it, we're not going to need this type of a plate anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that and then get back out of the components. So we're looking at the whole thing itself. And this is to scale. So if I pull this over and try to plug it into the front of my model here, let's go top view. And if I roughly kind of estimate where it's going, let's look on front and bring it down to roughly in place. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so right now it looks like our stand-in geometry for our airplane is still a little small for our power source. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the parts that I've that I've modeled and I'm going to scale them up a bit so that they are closer to what we want for our power pod. And I'm going to hold down Alt which will allow it to scale out from the center. And let's see if I bring this up because what I'd like is for the two skewers that go into the firewall up here to basically be anchored into the front of this area to hold that in and then also have the skewer here in the back of the power pod to basically go straight through the side of the fuselage and then that would anchor the, the power pod in the back. So basically that skewer holds the power pod in place and the grip of the skewers up front keep it from swinging out and holds the whole thing in place. Uh, let's see here. How are we looking scale-wise? I think we're a little pretty close, but I think we're a little too big still. So I'm going to scale that. Oh, now that I'm looking at it, we don't want the inside of our airframe to to get too tightly uh, pushed in on the edges of this power pod. So actually, I think we're just about the right size now. Because looking at our design, we're basically seeing the outside edge of our what would be our final foam model, and we have to kind of visualize that there'd be a 3 16 of an inch thickness coming inward from each of these faces. So that would probably be pretty much dead on, uh, bring it right into to touching that, those back two corners of the power pod. So I think scale-wise, our placeholder geometry is, is at a good spot. So. There we go. That gives us kind of an idea of what what our end goal is. All right. So now we've got everything kind of scaled up the way that we want. And again, I'm basically going to have some skewers in here. Let me move my power pod down just a little bit. And we're going to have the thickness of the foam up here in the nose that's going to hold the, the power pod in place. And I'm, we may have to glue in a couple pieces of foam to kind of build up the side a little bit to help kind of sturdy and strengthen the uh, front of the power pod right up here to fill in these gaps. But again, we're I'm not an aeronautical engineer and we're just kind of feeling this through, so we'll come to that if necessary. All right, so at this point, let me save so I know I've got everything scaled the way I want. And I'm going to go ahead and hide my power pod for now. And I'm going to switch over and start working on my wings and designing the fold over for it. So I'm going to hide my other parts here. All right, so I've got just my wings outlined basically. And since these are a component, I'm going to work with one at a time and it's going to basically translate across to the other. So I'll go ahead and hide the other wing as well. And when I unhide it, after I've made a bunch of changes, we'll see that all those changes happen to it as well. So now that I'm inside this component, I'm going to keep clicking until I get down to selecting just the, the face itself with its lines. And I'm going to choose Move and Alt to kind of drag a duplicate of it out this way. Because I'm going to kind of make this as a split fold over wing. 
so for now, I've basically got two that are duplicates of each other, but I want this one up front to be flipped. And actually, uh, one of the great things about the flight test community and just kind of working together as a community, you get to share knowledge. And I had actually never come across the flip along tool that uh, another viewer had actually pointed me to. Uh, so rather than having to do the scale by negative one to kind of reverse this, if you right click, we have this nice little flip along and you can basically choose which axis you want to flip the object along. And if you happen to choose the wrong one, you just hit undo and try a different axis until it's flipped the direction that you want to. I think I want to flip it along the green direction. And that was that was what I wanted. So now it's basically a mirror image of each other. And I'm basically going to be designing this half to curve and fold over to produce the top part of the wing. And then this half is going to be the bottom or flat half of the wing. So for this one, I'm going to reverse the faces so that the surface that is the final surface will be down here. And I'm going to re reverse these faces because, oops, don't want to move it. When we're done, this is going to be the bottom flat part of the wing here. So I'm going to start laying out my segments that I'm going to use to uh, <clears throat> basically be the score guides for when I do a crimp and then roll over to create the airfoil shape. So uh, I'm going to take my line tool here and I'm going to start back at this end and I'm basically going to come down three-fourths of an inch. I can see that in the lower left hand or lower right hand corner the length of the line as I'm getting ready to put the second uh, end point in here. So what did I say? Three-fourths of an inch, right? So let's move that for half. There's three fourths. Okay. So that gives me, <coughs> excuse me, a segment here on the edge. So now I can click and draw out a line straight across. I'm gonna have to zoom in to get right up and have it hit on that edge. And I can tell that it did split that face the way I wanted because. Now this top segment isn't uh, selected, but the bottom part is. And we're going to do this a couple more times. So I'm going to click that point, come down three-fourths of an inch, click again, and then click again to start my line across. And come right over to that edge. And do that one more time here. Three fourths of an inch. And let's come right up to that edge. There we go. All right. So those are going to be my score lines I'm going to use to kind of create my segmented airfoil here. So, <coughs> excuse me. So to do that and model that, uh, I'm going to group this half here so that the changes I make to this one don't kind of get tangled up in the other one. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to need to rotate each of these segments. So first, I'm going to rotate this edge. And when you go to rotate, you can choose which axis you want to rotate on. So right now it's cl clicking to the blue, but that's not the one I want. However, if I click and hold, I can start dragging until it flips around to whatever axis I actually want to rotate on. So I'm still holding the mouse, and now that I see I'm going to be rotating on the red axis, I can release. And I'm going to set my handle out here and start to fold this up and over. And I'm going to rotate my view so I can get a rough idea of what my angle is here. And my angle does, it does read out your angle in the lower right corner there, but I'm just, again, kind of eyeballing this design. So we'll say that that's a good start for the airfoil. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select only these faces and I'm going to rotate those over on the red axis if I can. Oops. Let's redo rotate. Rotate on the red axis and we'll kind of keep rotating around a little bit to 
get a view of how this is starting to take shape. And I'm going to rotate these two on the red axis. All right. And finally, I'm going to take this one and rotate it to try to bring it pretty close to flat. It doesn't have to be perfect, but for our purposes, we're just kind of making sure that we get a nice airfoil curve shape here. All right. So now I'm going to move this into place. Hit and move, and I'm going to use this corner as my reference. I'm basically going to attach those corners there and swing around. And so you can kind of see how this is going to take shape. And now I want to basically cut out some of the bottom area to get this wingtip under camber. All right, so what I'm going to do is flip around. Let's see here. Flip around to the bottom view. And I'm actually going to just kind of trim off part of this bottom segment here. And take my pencil tool and draw a line straight down to here. And basically get rid of, I'm going to hold shift so I can not select this line. I want to keep it, but I'm going to be deleting all of this. There we go. All right, so now that leaves me with a nice fold over wing. And I'm going to adjust the length of this top segment to kind of line up closer to this back edge. So let me switch to top view, go in here, and I'm just going to use the scale tool to pull this back to this edge. Oops. I need to do it from the side here a little bit. There we go. All right. And that gives us our little fold over wing with some under camber on the wingtip. So hopefully that will help avoid some of the wingtip stall characteristics uh, that I might otherwise have if I had as a completely flat bottom wing. All right, so let's go and unhide all of our other stuff and hide the blueprints. And we can see that all those changes translated right over to the other side of the wing. Now, depending on what type of airfoil you're going to design into your plane, um, how many segments you're going to have, how faceted or how smooth the curve might be, uh, this is basically one, one way to design that type of foldover wing and uh, as we'll see when we get to the unfolding process basically each of these segments will unfold back out flat again for uh, to be able to make it a nice flat printable set of plans so that's going to be it for this particular installment uh, in the next we're going to start working with the tail and uh, designing how we're going to make those control surfaces work because uh, this is going to be a three channel so we're not going to have uh, ailerons in the wings however uh, if you wanted to, um, you could easily modify this type of design and just design in areas of the wing here for ailerons if you wanted to. So, next episode.